Everybody, it's Tyler here at Championships checking in. 1323 Madtown Robotics, another phenomenal machine by them and very Madtown-esque every single year that their robot brings as well too. I love everything that goes in this spot. So we'll be doing a note journey, follow through on this thing. So of course, going through their intake all the way through. A incredible shooter, love their app mechanism as well. But Relly's here to talk more about it. So Relly, we can't wait to learn more about this awesome machine coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Riley, let's follow that note journey through, starting with your intake. Talk to me more, what, more about what you have and how you're utilizing it. Yeah, so this year, whenever the, when the game game release and the actual manual came out, we decided that we could we could actually utilize an under the bumper intake to the best of our ability. And for this year, for our actual design, we did um, a UTB intake the entire width of our robot, allowing our drivers to just essentially just ram into the note and just pick it up with ease instead of having to take time and, redu and have longer cycle times. So it ca also came into a strategy. And since we have a full length under the bumper intake, we also have some funneling rollers powered off of a different gearbox that help funnel it towards the center and put it into position so that it can follow, follow through and get into our, tun into our tunnel slash feeder system that's very similar to what we used last year. Um, you want to lift it up so we can pick up the flap? Yeah, so right now we're just going to take off the protective cover. We just have it in place so that we could prevent any notes getting stuck. Sure. You know. All right. So if you guys want, you guys take a closer look. So when whenever our note actually comes through, it, it gets, it gets, this is the path that it follows. We have a 3D printed ramp along with um, a polycarb sheet right there that would direct it directly into these feeder rollers I had just previously mentioned. And we for our feeder system, we have a combination of dead axle and live axle rollers. Um, the reason why we did that is because we wanted to ensure that the note would actually be sucked in, but would also retain its original shape rather than having to deal with the actual stretching of the note, the compression, all of that. We didn't want to um, manipulate the note until we were ready to shoot it out to keep consistent shots. Something I gotta ask on that too, is that leading to when you look at the game, you know, Matt Town always builds, uh, I think, some of the larger robots that we see out there every single year. But I think that what you just mentioned probably goes into why, right? Because yeah. you don't wanna have to do that compression as well. So when you were looking at Crescendo, was that one of the things that really did come up? Of yeah, like, so hey, for we us, go small? So for us, we typically always do max max size, right? Max frame perimeter, yeah. max weight. We really wanna maximize the amount of robot that we have in our packaging, which is why we actually went with, all, with our under bumper intake, right? Although we did have to have a, a rectangular uh, rectangular drivetrain, we compensated that with adding our under the bumper intake. And as you can see, the side plates integrate all of our all of our design together. It integrates our hanger. Um, it goes back to our drivetrain and provides a more mounting positions. For if you would look right here, this is where we actually mount our side our side funneling rollers. Sure. And from there, it just keeps going. So it's a very Practical, practical design that we try to implement. We try to ensure that every 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 ounce that we put into into this robot, we use it to the best to the best that we can. So let's continue that. So we've gone into your transfer system here. Talk more about your shooter and your app mechanism. How that's working out? Yeah. So um, keeping keeping through the line of the line that the note travels through our robot. Um, next up would be our actual shooting mechanism. So our entire shooter. Um, or as we typically prefer to call it, our cannon. Sure. Since it has very low pivot and towards the back, um, it actually are, it actually is powered off of the one gearbox and a transfer tube to transfer the torque and make sure that there's no slippage between the, either side and that it all stays consistent. And we're able to do that with a custom machine section gear, and that allows us to get um, to shoot from far farther away, right? You guys typically see us shooting from 
from the wing line, and that's because of our because of our pivot. That's the reason we're able to do that, as it allows us to maximize the, the target area that we can. So from there, we have two sets of rollers. Um, we have a four four inch rollers, which are going to be the front ones, and we have three inch. Um, although both sides are powered independently of each other, so we have. Um, we have one motor per side, and what that allows us to do is apply differential speeds to the note, ensuring that we have that stable and note flight um, throughout different positions around the field. Very cool. And then for uh, your amp mechanism here, uh, how does this handoff actually work to how it's going in? And then are you doing anything from the trap side as well too? Yeah, so for the amp, what it does, it actually just comes down about here, and it just, it's, all it does, it just follows the path and just comes and shoots back out. Gotcha. So, so it's literally just coming out of, out of here and then right up through here then? Yeah. It just comes like about there and it just like does a little bend that you I guys can see on video. No, that's great. I, you know, anytime you can take something and it just adds these little simplistic things that just score so effectively, those are, I think, what make great yeah. robots and great teams as For well. For us, we really try to integrate every, everything to make sure that all like the entire process of the note for this year would be as seamless as possible. Can we talk about how then you know, like your climber works and how that integrates in with your trap mechanism? Okay. Um, so for our, for our hanging hanging mechanism, we have two sets of arms. Um, the ones that you see up here, on this side and right here, would be our hanger arms, and those actually are what winch down on the chain itself. And the second set that you see right here and right here, we we call our hanger forks. And both of those are are on gas struts. So whenever our which, which unspools the string, it allows our hanger arms to come up. And once they get to a certain height, it allows our hanger forks to actually come out all the way through our, the gas struts. No, you're all good. And then from there, whenever we line up, um, our driver just starts the hanging sequence and it starts winching back down. Last thing I kind of want to ask you as we walk through, as you're approaching the World Championship here, any major uh, changes that you were looking getting in the champs, either from a mechanical side or even like approaching like autonomous or anything in regards to how you were looking at uh, competing here on your division? Um, like coming in, like coming into champs, right? We just really wanted to make sure that we had all of the strategies that we can implement. Um, but all of it came down to the, the beginning of season, right? Whenever we actually design our robot, we think about those high levels of play and strategies that we can implement down, down the line. Awesome. Well, really, thank you so much for telling us more about Mad Town's robot this year. Another phenomenal machine as we're uh, wrapping up here. Uh, you're currently ranked second in your division right now, so we can't wait to see how far you go. Mad Town, we know it's looking for big things, so good yeah. luck the rest of the way. All right, thank we you so much. Thank you. Take thank care. You. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.